Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you for joining us for one of our talks today. Today, we're incredibly lucky to be joined by the wonderful Leah McHugh to talk all about Marvel's The Eternals. And I wanted to start by talking about your audition for the movie because you didn't know what project you were auditioning for. Um, you, it sounds like you had one scene for the audition and very little in terms of actual detail because of that. And so when you're auditioning for something like that, where you don't have full character details, you've only got one scene and you're not really sure about the broader context how did you set about really figuring out what the character was for your audition and how you prepared for going into that room well the first round audition was dummy side so it wasn't even a character from the movie it was a completely like different character for a different thing and i remember i went in and it, the breakdown said she had dark hair and dark eyes and i and i had blonde hair at the time so i was like i'm willing to dye my hair and wear contacts if you need and they were like oh this is nothing to do with the movie this is dummy sides I was like, oh, okay. And, and then I got a call back and they very, of course, secretly sent me real sides. I had to sign all the NDAs. And um, it was just a couple of scenes. I Googled it and I figured out that Sprite is an eternal. And that's pretty much it. I, I sort of, in a, in a lot of auditions, you kind of just get what you get and you have to figure it out. You know, they don't give you a lot most of the time. So, I mean, I just did what I could with what I had and I just prepared for the audition with the sides that they gave me. And then when I went to London to actually, I actually did two screen tests. So for the second screen test, I got new sides. I think, I think it was the night before or, or yeah, a few hours before. Um, so you just sort of have to wing it, I guess. <laughs> And I wanted to talk about the way in which you developed Sprite as a character because, you know, fundamentally she has all the traits that other characters have. There's things that she feels frustrated by, resented by. She's funny. You know, she's a, a fully layered textured character, but you have that added element that you are playing a character who's in the body of a child, but is thousands of years old. And so what were the unique aspects of how you really figured out the way in which you wanted to play her as a character in developing her? I really related to Sprite. I felt, I have felt sort of stuck in being young a lot of my life because I, I feel like I feel a lot older than I actually am. And I've been told a lot of my life that I'm an old soul, you know? So when I came into the character, I think I, I was really like perfect for this character because I really related to her. And I think Chloe saw that and she, and she helped me connect to her in other ways on top of that, which I think really brought the character to life. She's very special. I think She's very layered and has, like you said, a lot of different inner conflicts that she struggles with throughout the movie. There's a lot of parts to Sprite. And I think that's one of the really fun things about the movie is that it goes back in time and in current time. And you really get to understand not just Sprite, but all the characters. And within that, you also got the opportunity to play her at so many different points in time where she's at completely different stages in terms of her emotional arc as a character. And so what was that like in, in getting to explore so many different versions of who she is as a character throughout the film? It was really helpful because I felt like it built on the character all the way up into the end and her motives and things for why she does or acts a certain way. So going back in time to those, you know, little pockets of flashbacks, I felt um helped all of us um, like understand our characters and you know why she may not be a big fan of humanity and things like that. And you mentioned Chloe, and I, of course, wanted to talk about working with her as, as a director, because you've spoken about how even though it was this really huge scale production, that the way that Chloe works, that it still felt and like had the intimacy of working on an independent film because of how she shoots everything. A lot of what we see on screen is what we see in the camera. It's not crazy visual effects heavy unless it needs to be for specific action sequences um, and at the core of every scene it's all about the emotional heart of the characters and so was it important to Chloe and working with scenes on all of you that everything always came back to character and, and to emotion and that that was the driving factor of any given scene yeah when we were shooting everything felt very like real and raw which I'm um, I don't know what I was expecting coming coming into a Marvel movie but that wasn't exactly what I was expecting so I mean, it was a really special thing having Chloe there because she really brought to life all these like little interaction moments. And if you really like watch the movie and study, you sort of see, um, you know, maybe little looks or, you know, when, when she scans across the room of all 10 of us, there's like something in each of our faces. And she really brings through like the emotion and the family aspect in the movie. So it's not just action and, you know, 
action-y marvel-y, it's like, it has a lot of heart too. Yeah, and you mentioned that there are those moments where she scans across all of you and we see different things in each character. And particularly when we first see you on screen, we actually don't hear you talk straight away. And yet there's already a sense of who your character is and some of her personality. So what was the journey of filming scenes like that early on before you had the dialogue and, and much more of the dialogue rich scenes of the movie? Well, we didn't we didn't actually shoot in like chronological order. So those that was like halfway through the shoot when I was doing, you know, the quiet stuff. I honestly we did, we did a lot of the big scenes first, actually, a lot of the talking. So it was really you just had to like, you know, dive right in every day on set. Um, you know, you work on the scene as you're doing it and it sort of gets better as you do more takes and you really get, get into that sort of moment. Yeah. And one of the other moments where there's kind of a quietness to it is, um, you know, without giving anything away, there's a moment where a character in the movie has died and your character is responding to that. And I thought it was an interesting choice that it's a very quiet grief for her. You know, it's not kind of like crying loudly. Did you always know that you wanted it to be kind of a quiet, very internalized response of grief for her as a character? I mean, yeah, these characters have known each other for so long that there's sort of like, you know, it's unexpected if something were to happen to one of them that, you know, I, the characters just have so much feeling and, and, you know, so much pain that it's just, it is a very like internal thing. It's not so screaming and yelling and hysterical because these characters are also very mature. And, and on a separate note, your character also has such great comedic moments throughout the film and kind of a very dry sense of humor as well. Um, what, what was that like in terms of finding her comedic voice as a character for you? It was really fun. I mean, I think I'm, I, I don't want to, I'm like a little similar to Sprite, I think, in like the comedy aspect of it. So it was just like very natural. I mean, I'm very snarky with my brothers and, you know, we make, we nag on each other and make you know, mean jokes sometimes. So, I mean, it was really natural and fun. And working with Kumail especially, because he's like really, really good comedian. He's absolutely like hilarious, not just on set, but like all the time. So he, he made it really fun and easy. <laughs> You also had to learn um, to deliver like a whole monologue and a whole slew of dialogue in Babylonian. And I know that you were working with a dialect coach. And so how did you and the dialect coach work together on really just not just learning it phonetically, but also really finding the emotion behind the delivery? Because when you did that scene, it was to a bunch of background actors that didn't know what you were saying, but you obviously <laughs> still had to be able to communicate what you were expressing. I mean, when you come onto a Marvel set, especially like me, I was 13. I'm like, I cannot mess this up. Like, I'm not going to screw this up. So the first scene I actually had, I spoke in Spanish and I, I didn't mess it up because I was like, I didn't let myself mess it up. And I think Chloe was like, oh, you're really good at languages. So she gave me, of course, she like gave me all the languages and wrote all those scenes for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have, I have really funny videos of myself trying to learn that and it took me a while. I just like stayed up really late one night in my hotel room and I was just like saying it over and over and over again because you're just speaking gibberish. It doesn't make any sense. And, um, you know, trying to remember what you're actually saying isn't what you're really saying. Um, but yeah, I, I learned it pretty well. The dialect coach was actually very impressed. She was like, wow, you've got most of the pronunciation right. I'm very surprised. Um, I sort of rewrote it in a way that made sense to me to, as like saying it, which helped. And I, was, that scene was really funny. I was, it was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing because I'm like waving my hands around looking at the ceiling and all these extras have to act impressed, but it, it's hilarious because they don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, you know, you're bringing up that that feeling of it being a little bit embarrassing. And, and I know that you've talked before about how one of the things with acting is you're thrown into all these types of situations that that on paper do feel like embarrassing things to do. And, and part of your job is to push past it. And so when you're doing scenes like that, you know, do you just have to kind of put it to the back of your mind and not think about it? Or how do you push through those moments? I mean, it's, it's like, you know, when you like really want to go on a roller coaster, but you're really scared. And like, you're going up the thing and you're like freaking out and you're nervous, but as soon as it starts to happen, you have a lot of fun. So it's, it's similar to that. I mean, I arrive on set, I walk out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget everything I'm supposed to say. I'm so nervous. And then, you know, I do it once and I get all my jitters out. I'm like, okay, that wasn't so bad. And it just sort of gets better as you go. And yeah, I mean, and everything I do as an actor, I have to get past the nerves. 
I mean, you have to forget the fact that like tons of people are watching you behind the cameras that you can't even see, let alone the people you're in the scene with. So it's just, it's a lot of just like t breaking down those barriers and sort of forcing yourself to do it at the start. Yeah. And in the film, as well as the ensemble moments, you get so many great opportunities to explore one-on-one -on -one interpersonal dynamics with the other characters, and especially with Gemma Chan and Richard Madden. And with Richard Madden, there's that great reference of how, you know, him and his character Icarus and Sprite are kind of like Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. And was that something that when you read that in the script, you wanted to kind of actually look at the actual dynamic of those characters in narrative folklore and really think about how that, how that came across in Sprite in this film? I mean, they, they are very similar to Tinkerbell and um, Peter Pan, which I, I, I thought it was kind of funny. And I, I have, I've, I've obviously seen Peter Pan. And so I kind of understood the dynamic right away. <laughs> I know it was really great. And then in working with Gemma Chan, because your characters are so close and have been living together amongst humans for so long, how did the two of you work together to build a lot of that history and what you wanted that relationship to look like between them on screen? Well, I think it's very like, we're not just friends, we're sisters, right? So, you know, sisters fight, they get along sometimes and you know, you really know them well. Like I know my, my sister and older sister, I just know her so well, better than anyone else. And so, I sort of tried to bring that into the relationship a little bit where we don't, we don't always have to like, like show our affection for each other or show that type of thing. It's just sort of like a very personal, like deep down, like sisterly type of bond. Yeah. And obviously any Marvel movie, there's so many great details when it comes to the costumes and the hair and the makeup. And particularly with Sprite, you know, they give you a very specific haircut and you've got <laughs> costumes which say a lot about Sprite as well. Um, and it, and it sounds like you were thinking about Sprite having lived through so many different time periods and really picking the pieces that she liked from different time points. And so what what did it look like in terms of her costumes coming together and what that really said about her as a character? Um, honestly, when I went into the first fitting that I had, I had no idea what they would put me in. You know, they could put me in regular teenager clothes. They could put me in like little kid clothes. I mean, I just had no idea, but when I got there, they sort of explained like why they they sort of gave me that type of like Oliver Twist vibe um, was, you know, Sprite's been living through thousands of years. She's gone through like so many different styles and clothing options, right? So she sort of, I guess, picked out like a few things that she liked over the past years and sort of has like her own unique type of style. And um, I loved the hair for the character. I thought it worked really well. You know, it's, it was sort of like an attitude-y, but also like childlike type of haircut. Loved it for the character. I didn't personally like it in my personal life, but it was great for the character. That's why you didn't decide to keep it afterwards. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> It's also really fun watching the moments where even though Sprite's an adult, because she's treated like a child so often, not by the Eternals, but other people, that there are moments where she still kind of behaves a little bit petulant and has those little childlike moments. Um, and it feels like it's partly in response to how other people are treating her, but also because she can get away with it. Was it easy to find the moments where she would kind of allow herself to be a little bit childlike and petulant? Or was it the scripts really just made it very clear when you read them? I mean, I think it was a little bit of both. I think, you know, the scripts did make it clear in those moments, but I mean, she, it's, it's really funny. It's like, a, it's also a big part of her character because she uses that childlikeness of herself to her advantage, you know, like Kit Harrington, um, Dane, he plays Dane Whitman and she sort of, she, she tells him things like, oh, we're the Eternals, these are the Deviants. And she knows that he won't believe her because she's just a kid, right? So it's things like that that she uses to her advantage you know, and oh, it's past my bedtime. And I think it's a lot of just comedy and sort of making what actually really does affect her into a joke, you know? <laughs> And obviously any Marvel movie all, always involves a lot of very intensive stunt work. But what's so great about the movies is that the stunt work is always kind of stylized in a way for that's unique to each character. And and so what did a lot of your stunt training look like in terms of figuring out what's, what Sprite's movements were going to be? I mean, I don't think it was it was very complicated. I mean, they they sort of take you in a little like place and see like what you can do, you know, so they like had me run around a little bit and they saw if I, you know, was flexible or not or what I could do. 
And I think they just sort of, you know, took it from there. I didn't do like a ton of rehearsal, but there, there, I mean, there was one scene that I did have to do a, a bit of work on, on the, um, what's it called? The wire, which I thought, I mean, I was really excited. I honestly would have like loved to do more. It was like, it was fun for me. <laughs> I'm sure, sure a lot of the other, you know, like Richard would have given me some of his stunts. They were always doing stunts. <laughs> And what what's kind of the thing that you feel that you learned the most about in terms of your work as an actor from working on this movie? I mean, I changed so much. I changed since I shot that movie. And I mean, while shooting that movie, I just learned so much like in that period of time. And what I find really interesting about working with actors, let alone, you know, A-list actors like that were in this cast, um, is that you you, you can see the way everyone works individually and people who've been working as actors for years, like the little things that they do or the way they work or their work ethic. And I think like, like just taking that all in and learning so much. I mean, something Selma, you know, complimented me on was that I was like never on my phone. She's like, don't ever be on your phone. You do a great job. You need to like learn from people around you and, you know, get to know people and make those connections when you're working. And it's, I think that's very, very important. Yeah, no, I think your performance is so fantastic in this movie. I'm so excited for everybody <laughs> to get to see all the great work that you've done. Congratulations and thank you so much, Leah. Thank you so much.